A Huntress is considered by many to be the strongest class. So why do I keep dying? The Huntress is strong from range. Take advantage of it by opening doors from afar to give you vision. Scout ahead by shooting into dark sections. Create space between sleeping enemies and hit them from outside of vision. Look for the exclamation point. Put grass between yourself and range minions. The Spirit Bow. The Spirit Bow is a unlimited source of range damage. You can't upgrade it directly. It automatically levels up every 5 hero levels, maxing at plus 6 when you are level 30. You can't equip it. It shoots from your inventory. Enchant it as soon as you find a stone of enchantment. Some people even use a exotic upgrade scroll. Some of the strongest enchantments are Grim, Elastic, and Projecting. If you get a strong enchantment, consider augmenting your bow for speed, or else I usually leave it unaugmented. Talents. Oh, so talented. The French have a saying, à chacun son goût. To each their own taste. The same can be said about the talents. Here are my tastes. My first point goes in follow-up strike for extra damage, then one point in each, usually finishing with two in survivalist intuition, sometimes nature's bounty if the on-diet challenge is enabled. Tier 2. I go one in heightened senses first, no more surprises behind doors, then two in durable projectiles, and one in the rest, starting with rejuvenated steps. Tier 3. Here we have two talents regardless of which subclass you pick, and three that are unique to the subclass. Sometimes I put one point into Searshot, and rarely do I use point blank, but my last sniper run, I put three into point blank because I had no way to create space from the enemies. It's situational. For the warden, I put three points into bark skin, three points into durable tips, and one into shielding dew. The sniper, like I said, is situational. So before we talk sniper talents, let's talk sniper. The sniper's thrown weapons and spirit bow will ignore armor as long as their targets are not adjacent to her. After using a thrown weapon, other than the bow, she will be able to use a special move corresponding to her bow's augment. A unaugmented bow will fire a snapshot, which deals reduced damage, but fires instantly. A bow augmented for speed will fire a volley of three arrows. Each arrow will do reduced damage but can still activate enchantments. This takes one turn to shoot. A bow augmented for damage will fire a sniper shot. This shot is guaranteed to hit, deals bonus damage based on distance from the target, and takes two turns to fire. For clarity, it fires on the first turn and takes an extra turn afterwards. Think of it like recoil. So kill him in one hit. So which is the best augment to use? Spoilers, it's speed. But let's check the chart anyways. Snapshot fires an instant arrow that does 66% of its regular damage. A volley. Fire three arrows. Each arrow does half of its usual damage but can proc its enchantment every Every time, takes one turn to use. The speed augmented spirit bow does the most damage regardless of the subclass, so volley is just bonus fun. A shuriken that surprise attacks will result in a volley where all three hit surprise attack. Sniper shot. Fire an arrow that does extra damage and cannot miss. It takes two turns to fire. Slow attack weapons and damage augments can be troublesome because your enemies get two turns to your one. But like the wiki says, make sure that you are prepared before going damage augment. I would recommend a heavy boomerang. Check out this footage from Pixel Nugget's channel where they absolutely crush with the heavy sniper build. The choices for sniper talents change depending on your augment. I go 3 in shared enchantment regardless of augment. For a damage augment with an upgraded boomerang, I go 3 in shared upgrades and 2 in farsight. For speed and normal augments, I go 3 in farsight, 2 in searshot, or point blank. The Warden! The Warden has the ability to see through grass. When planting a seed, feral grass will erupt all around the plant, allowing her to break line of sight. If a plant has been trampled by her, it has a more powerful effect, and plants which would normally be detrimental are now beneficial. Read that part again. The Warden can see through grass. That doesn't seem very powerful on paper until you are hidden behind grass and just sniping everything. I won't go over all the upgraded plant effects, but here's one example. The Sungrass gives you a healing buff for 100% of your hit points, one hit point per turn, and you don't have to stand still. When planting a seed, frilled grass will erupt. This part is what makes the Rotberry Warden so strong. If the Wand Maker gives you the Rotberry quest, you can keep the seed and use it to create a bunker of grass that you can chew out of. It's very, very strong. And because when you step on the Rotberry bush, it drops another Rotberry seed, you can use this over and over again. Gear! So what equipment should I look for? I enjoy roguelikes because every run is different. Your ability to adapt your playstyle to the gear you find will help you win. With that in mind, here are some build around items to look out for. Plate armor. Every class can go tank and spank build if you find plate armor in or before the caves. If you are going tank, I would recommend the warden subclass for the extra armor from Barkskin. Plus 5 or 6 is a good amount of upgrades. It can get repetitive to win every single game like this, but you win in every single game. For thrown weapons, the heavy boomerang is the best. A few upgrades on this and the shared upgrade talent is what makes the damage augment sniper build shine. Crossbow. A early crossbow up to plus 6 does a nice chunk of melee damage and it really buffs your darts. Remember to buy each pair of darts from the merchants. This pairs well with the warden's durable tips talent and the artifact footwear of nature. There are some precious rings. The best? Ring of sharpshooting hands down. 
If you get this and upgrade it to plus 15, the dungeon gives up, hands you the amulet of Yendor, and hires a limo to escort you back to the surface. It's that good. Ring of haste. Zoom zoom. At plus 3, your speed is doubled, so you will always be free to run away and make space for more bow shots. This next one takes some synergy, but if you get a lucky enchant on your spirit bow, the ring of arcana can be absolutely insane. Infinite elastic, instant grim kills, etc. Feel free to upgrade this one to the moon also. The Ring of Fuhrer and Ring of Accuracy are also nice, but not build defining rings in my opinion. Artifacts. The best artifacts for the Huntress are in my opinion, the Ethereal Chains, Timekeeper's Hourglass, Chalice of Blood, Master Thief's Armband, and Footwear of Nature gets a boost because of the Warden's talent. The Dried Rose can be fun if the ghost gets strong armor, but it often gets in the way of the arrows as well. Wands! The Warden has a unique build in the game. If you get a Wand of Regrowth, you can assemble Exodia. Literally freeze time, run around poisoning everybody, lighting them on fire, and teleporting them away where they wake up to a slow death. I have a video series on it, it's called the Golden Lotus build. I find the other utility wands to be great with the Huntress as well because she has good range damage with her bow. The Wand of Blast Wave is great for creating space, and the Wand of Prismatic Light is good for blinding range enemies when you don't have a blinding dart. Heroic Abilities Similar to talents, a Shakun Songut. They won't make or break your game, try them out. Have fun. Spectral Blades. Go with this talent if you have a buffed melee weapon. I like 2 in Phantom Blades, 2 in Projecting Blades, 4 in Spirit Blades, and the remaining 2 in Heroic Energy. Nature's Power. Choose this if you are ranged damage focused, need an escape ability, and don't feel like micromanaging the Spirit Hawk. I like 4 in Growing Power, 4 in Nature's Wrath, and 2 in Heroic Energy. Spirit Hawk. This one is very useful with the Damage Augment Sniper for the long range vision. It also helps with challenges when you need a torch. I like 3 in Eagle Eye, 0 in Go for the Eyes, 3 in Swiss Spirit, and 4 in Heroic Energy. I can see an argument for Go for the Eyes being very strong and fun. In my experience, I grew tired of the micromanaging and the Hawk often got in the way of my range attacks. Let me know if you have any questions, and if you die before the city, send me the seed, I'll play it back and we can compare. So far, out of two seed reviews, both times I have chosen a different ghost reward. Rat Punchers Punch on!